Okay, so let's get started with this project. And what you're going to need first of all is a three millimeter paper bead tool or something very similar. You're going to need some sharp scissors to cut out your template. You'll need a tube of glue, such as PVA glue or something similar. You'll need a glaze of your choosing and we will be painting the beads with the glaze and I prefer using this Decapatch Ultra Gloss Finishes Number 2 and you're going to need an old paintbrush. Uh, for this project I have used some holographic glitter and the holographic colours of this glitter are just not showing up under my studio lights but trust me it really really is rainbowy and holographic it's just not showing up what you'll also need is some cocktail sticks and i've got some plastic cocktail sticks here and you can see that i'm just popping them into the bead and that is how we're going to hold our bead when we are applying our glaze because we're going to hand paint each of these beads to get this beautiful glossy finish so that moves us on to the templates and i've got two templates here for you I've got this plain template which we're going to cut out all six of these triangles and you can see that they measure about six and a half centimetres or two and a half inches. I didn't do that deliberately. The way that I worked out well, how to measure them is that I wanted to make sure that there were six to a page so it just happened to work out that they were two and a half inches and you can see that I've got two plain templates here that are just on white print paper or copier paper and they are a three in size and I have got two templates here which is from a selection that I have on Etsy uh, where I've designed the paper and as you can see that on the back of the paper I've printed out the um, paper template, the triangles and believe it or not this is exactly the same paper that I have used to make this bead it's just once you apply the gloss you get a much richer finish. So as you can see I have cut out one of the templates already and if I just move the page up you can see that at the edge of the template there is always a white line um, and this is where the colour part of the template doesn't quite go up to the edge because every printer is different but you can just carry on with that no problem you're just going to cut straight across before then going off at an angle okay so once you've cut out your templates you should have six in total and these are flat bottom triangles and so you can see I've got six white ones and I've got six of the green ones because I'm going to be making at least two beads and you need to make sure that all of your edges are matched up so that the flat sides are with the flat sides and you're going to want to try and keep all of your strips together so that they don't move and sometimes it's helpful to stick a peg on the bottom just in the first instance to try and keep them together so the kind of bead that we are going to be rolling is a cone shaped bead and you can see if I just move it into the camera which always helps that the one side this side is a very flat end whereas the long part of it has a more tapered look to it so that's what we're going to roll today and you can see it's just much thinner at the top so keeping all of our edges together, making sure that we are um, keeping all of our sides nice and together and we can start rolling. Now I've spotted here that I've got a little jaggedy bit sticking out so I'm just going to chop that off with a pair of scissors and you know don't worry about coming back and just chopping things off if you're not quite happy with them at a later date, it's not a problem, we're just tidying it up. So one of the things I quite often get asked by people is what if my paper bead roller isn't quite as long as the paper and I've just never let that stop me because there is always a way around it. So um, you can see that as you start to, to roll it, it will start to come out. So what we're going to do is we are going to give the other side a little bit of a curl. So we'll just pop in the other side that doesn't fit in a little bit of a twist and just get it started in the rolling process just give it a little twist and you can see that then when we come to rolling the other side it's much easier because the other side of the paper is already 
curling itself. So here we go. So you just need to start and roll and don't worry about the other end. It will curl on its own. So what you need to be keeping an eye on for a cone shaped bead is just one end, which is the end that's currently not in the shot. But I will bring it down. There we go. So for this bead, we are looking at the left hand side and you are keeping an eye on the left side. So when you're making a cone shaped bead, don't try to organise both sides. Just focus on the left hand side. And what we're doing is we are decreasing it very slightly. We're only moving in a little bit. So just keep rolling because you want to create a smoother end to your bead. And don't worry about the now on the bottom side, the right bottom, because that will just take care of itself. You don't need to worry about that. So just keep rolling, keep rolling your bead and the shape. And if you feel like you might need to readjust anything, just pushing anything up, do. There's no rush to do these beads. You know, you're going to make these and they're going to last you years. So just take the time, just have a little wiggle, just have a little smooch. Just see where you fancy anything going. Just smush things up as you need to. And then when you're ready, you can get some glue and start to apply it. Now, what I'm doing here is I'm just before I take it off is I'm just pushing down in order to create a more flat bottom to the bead. So I'm just rearranging all of the strips and just to make sure that they are in the position that I want them to be in. So just keep rolling until you're happy. You can then take the bead off, making sure that everything is nice and tight, and then get some glue. And start gluing your strips down. Now you've obviously got six strips in this case to stick down. So start with one and just pop a little bit of glue behind. And what I do find with copy of paper is that it glues and sticks a lot quicker than something like scrapbooking paper. I find that you have to hold that down for a good 10 seconds just to get it to stick. And as you can see, this just, just stuck really quickly. And again, I'm just squashing that bottom down just to get a nice smooth end to my bead. And I'm quite happy with that, just rounding it off very slightly. There we go, and that is our first little mini tree done. And you can see what it will look like once it's been glazed. So I will do the same to the white strips and I will come back when they are all done. OK, so here we go. I have done the white ones and I have done the green ones. And what we now need to do is we are going to start and glaze them. So one of the things I forgot to mention at the beginning is that not only am I going to use the holographic glitter, but I'm also going to use the iridescent glitter, which is the same glitter that I used when we made the snowflakes in one of the other um, tutorials and I will leave a link at the top to that particular tutorial. So what we're going to need for this is we're going to need some of our decoupage glaze and we're going to need a surface in which to put them on. I'm using the backing of my Dymo labels from where I send out my orders. I hate to waste anything so I like to give everything at least a couple of uses and I'm going to pop my cocktail sticks onto my um, little mini trees just so that I've got something to hold them with and I've got a cocktail stick for stirring and first of all what I'm going to do is apply my first layer of glaze and this is just to give the bead a little bit of a coating just to start off it's just going to seal in all those edges and it's going to help to fill in some of the grooves and the cracks now you can easily see here how you could turn this bead into a seashell because it looks very shell-like. So I'm just going to give a nice fine coat to this bead and making sure I pay attention to the 
top of the bead and going into all of those little grooves. And the best way to get the glaze into those grooves is to go downwards into them. And we're not going to forget the ends. We're going to give those a good glaze. And you just need to make sure that you're not going too near to the... Um, uh, the cocktail sticks because otherwise you will find it quite tricky to get them off of the bead afterwards but don't worry we're going to swap ends of the cocktail stick once the first or second layer is dry and we can then focus on that end so I'm just going to pop them up to dry on a peg and we will start and glaze the second bead so this one has deeper ridges and you can see that with my paintbrush for this first coat I'm really going downwards to make sure that that glaze fills in some of those little crevices because I want a smooth bead. Now it's entirely up to you how you decide that you want your bead to look but for this particular um, bead I want them to have a smooth finish. Once our first layer of glaze is done we are then ready to start adding some glitter and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just tip out a little bit of this ultra gloss onto my sheet and I'm going to add some of the glitter directly into the glaze and this is a really nice way of using the glitter. It gets embedded in it and the glitter doesn't fall off. So it just depends on the kind of look that you're going for. So for this first layer, I'm going to embed the glitter into my uh, glaze. Now I find that the paper bead tools, if I haven't got a spoon or anything to hand, are quite handy for picking up the glitter because you can get a nice controlled measure amount. Mad I know the tips that you come out with, but give them a try. It's quite easy to pick up the glitter, just small little amounts and just apply it to your glitter, to your glaze. Now you'll notice that the glaze has a bit of a yellowy colour to it. It doesn't look like that once it's dry. So don't worry about ending up sort of changing the colour of your bead because it's gone a bit of a yellow colour. It does dry clear. So I'm just going to use my cocktail stick just to mix it in. And what you'll find with this particular glitter, especially this iridescent one, it does change the thickness of your um, glaze. But again, it just goes on really nicely. So don't worry too much about it. Obviously, the more you apply, the thicker the glaze will get and the more clumpy it will become. So you kind of need to have a little bit of a play around to get the right consistency. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our white bead, which is more of a sort of frosty bead, and we're going to start to apply a nice thick but even layer of this new glaze, which has got the iridescent glitter embedded in it. And again, I'm working in a downwards motion in order to get that glitter to really fill in any of the nooks and crannies and the little crevices within this bead. So I'm going to speed up the next section because once you've seen me glazing one bead with some glittery glaze, you've seen me glaze several of them. So I'm just going to speed this bit up so that you can see and you can see how lovely and glossy that one is. And we're now going to start on the next one. So we're going to again get a bit more glitter out or a little bit more glaze out, some more glitter. And because I'm not going from a dark shade to a light shade, I'm not going to clean my paintbrush out. I'm going to use the same brush, same paintbrush because I don't mind if I get a little bit of the iridescent glitter into this one. That's not a problem. So I've mixed it up and I'm going to use the same paintbrush to glaze my bead. And you can see that again, I'm working in a downward motion just to make sure that the glitter goes into those crevices because it's going to create a nice band of glitter as we go round. So really just getting another coat of this glittery glaze onto the beads. So in total I've made an extra I've made four beads. I already had a gold one and I already had my original green one. And what I've done is I've taken one of the white templates and I've painted it gold and then I've made the other green bead. So we've now got six star uh, six beads or six trees in total. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I add some extra glitter to the white bead because I'm going to give it a frosty coating. Now this is the same method that I use to make my snowflakes. So if you've seen that, then you can skip forward a little bit 
but otherwise just watch and have a little look and see how I do it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tip out some of this iridescent glitter onto a sheet that I can easily put the excess back. So I've tipped some out and I'm now going to give the bead a coating of the ultra gloss decoupage clay. So I'm just going to get my paintbrush, make sure it's clean. And what I need to do is make sure that I'm not getting any of the gold glitter from the other ones that I have glazed because I do want this bead to just be nice and frosty. So pop a layer of glaze on and it does need to be quite a thick layer now as you can see here what I've done is I have swapped the ends that my cocktail sticks in because I would want to really focus on the other end this time so again we're not going to go too close to the ends where the cocktail sticks are because I've already dealt with that end I don't need to worry about that end anymore that one's all nice and glazed but I do want to focus on the top so I'm going to apply a nice generous layer of glaze make sure it's completely full and got a nice thick coating on it not so thick that it will drip off but it needs to be a nice thick coating that it will grab the glitter and just off of camera I'm just giving the top of the bead a coat which is really helpful that I obviously took it away from the camera um there we go I obviously remembered and brought it back in so I'm just going around the edges just making sure that it has got a nice glossy coat so just rest my paintbrush and now I'm going to dip it and roll it and squash it into the iridescent glitter and I want it to really adhere to it and you can see how frosty that tree gets and again squashing it into the end and I'm going to pick up the paper and again I'm just going to use that so that I'm not going to get my finger marks on it just to squash the extra glitter onto it to make sure it really is covered then what I need to do is I need to tap the tree to get rid of any excess so this one is quite a messy glittery one the other ones where the glitter is included in the glaze is a more controlled way of glittering but this one really does give you that frosty look to it a frosty finish to our tree which I think just looks great so we'll pop that one to dry and then we'll come back and we'll do the last part of the tutorial so we now need to make some stands for our trees because the tree has to stand up and what I've taken here are some strips from a magazine. These are actually magazine covers and they are about two centimetres, well I think they're about 1.8 centimetres and that's about three quarters of an inch. So it's approximate. You just need a stand that's going to go on the bottom of your bead, so don't stress too much about the sizes. And I've originally made some with a 3mm hole, but actually I think a 1.5mm hole gives a slightly smaller, tighter bead. So that's what we're going to be doing. And again, what we're going to notice is that for these particular strips, the bead roller is not longer than the piece of paper. So again, what we're going to do is we're going to pop it in one side and we're going to give it a little curl and then we'll pop on to the other side and we will roll from that side. So you can see we've got it started and don't worry about that little rip. That's not a problem. And I could have easily edited this out and taken that one out. But you know what? I'm really not worried about something like that because it's so easy to fix and I don't want to get rid of that paper strip just because there's a bit of a rip in it. It seems like it's such a waste when if you have, if you keep watching what you'll notice is, oh, where's it gone? Well, it's just disappeared. No one's ever going to know that there was a rip in it and you can just carry on. So again, what we're going to be making is bead shapes very similar to the trees. It's another cone shaped bead and again, for this particular one, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be keeping an eye on the right hand side and we'll let the left hand side just do its job. So we're going to keep that line on the right hand side going straight and the left hand side will just move in accordingly and it will just create that beautiful cone shape. So we're just rolling it up nice and straight, keeping an eye on that edge. 
rolling it up until we get to the end. Now I find that magazine paper, especially if it's a bit glossy, requires a little bit more glue and it also requires you to hold it a little bit longer than copier or printer paper. So we'll apply a little bit of glue and then we will hold it just to make sure that it stays stuck down. So I'm going to hold it really in place. Give it a squeeze. And I do always have glue all over my fingers. There we go. And there is our first bead. And again, what we're going to do is we're going to squash it down flat, push everything downwards so that we create a smooth flat bottom because we want our tree to be able to stand up. Okay, so we're on the homeward stretch and we now need to do something with our tree stands. And I thought it would be quite nice to add some um, very fine and very flyaway gold silver. And they call it copper, but I think it's more like a sort of rose gold. Now, if you're going to use this, please make sure that you close any windows, any doors, any drafts. Don't sneeze because it literally will fly everywhere so we're going to pop one of our little beads onto a cocktail stick and we're going to give the bead a little bit of a coat now i hate to waste anything so i'm going to use the excess glaze and glitter from when we did the trees because i hate to waste anything and it's just sitting there so why use glue or any other new glitter might as well just use the same so i'm just going to move everything out the way and this um like the gold foil, it just sticks to everything. So you need to pick it up really carefully. And as you can see, I'm just using some um, jewelry pliers and I'm just going to pull it apart uh, with my uh, jewelry tool and a cocktail stick I'm actually gonna pull it apart with. So I'm just gonna move those bits out of the way and pop them back in the pot because we just want to make this one silver and this is the one that's going to go on our frosty tree. So I have painted my tree and I'm just going to apply some of this glitter and it's really easy to get it to stick on. You just need to pop it on and smooth it into place. Really easy and it just adds a nice element to it. Now, one of the things that I quite like doing with my beads is um, if I'm going to apply some kind of coating to it or I'm going to apply some kind of gloss to it, I quite often like to still see the fact that it is a paper bead underneath. Sometimes I like to completely hide that fact, but for these ones, I wanted to still keep that knowledge and the look of the fact that you can still see that it's a paper bead underneath so I'm not going to completely cover this with glitter not glitter um with foil or yeah gold foil silver foil I'm just going to give it a coating there you see and that's our little tree done and of course it's just not going to focus because it's too far up but you get the idea so what I'll do is I will do all of the others and I'll come back when they're done. So last bit. Now we're just going to attach our completed beads together. So I'm going to apply a nice generous amount of glitter, of glue rather. I've got glitter on the brain and I'm just going to smooth it down the edges. Now what we want to make sure that is that we're not interfering with the holes in the bead because if you wish to string these beads up, if you want to attach any other beads to them or you want to turn them into a decoration, then you might need to have access to that hole. So I'm just going to squish and twist the bead in because the bead will be, in many ways, almost like a screw because the way that we've constructed the bead, it creates almost like a screw quality to it in which you can twist it in. So you're going to need to hold it in place and then you can let it dry and so you'll need to repeat the process for all the others making sure that they are straight and just leave them to dry and there we go there you have it i hope you've enjoyed this tutorial please make sure that you hit the subscribe button and i will see you again thanks very much for watching hope you've enjoyed it